Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man, your Director of Worship Resources with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I am your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding and leadership of worship where you are. Today I'm in the classroom where I've been teaching United Methodist Worship, Form and Freedom at uh, Drew University Theological School this summer. Um, and one of the things that we've talked about in class that I thought would be good to add to this series on presiding are some things we should not be doing as presiders at the Sacrament of Holy Communion in the United Methodist Church, and some better things that we should be doing in our congregations and as presiders. So the first of these things not to do is not to break the bread at the words of institution during the Great Thanksgiving. You know that part of the Great Thanksgiving where we say, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do not break the bread there because we're not doing a reenactment. We're offering ourselves in praise and thanksgiving to God in a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. The breaking of the bread happens at the conclusion of the sacrifice. And so after the final doxology, after we have said, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And then we've usually prayed the Lord's Prayer together. That's the time when we break the bread. Why? Because now the sacrifice is complete. We've offered ourselves, we've, and we're, we've awaited the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon these gifts. We trust that the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon them. So now the bread can be broken so that it can be given to all. So we break the bread after the great thanksgiving, not during the words of institution. Second thing not to do, do not pre-consecrate the elements for use elsewhere. Here's what this holy mystery, our official doctrinal statement on the theology and practice of the sacrament of Holy Communion teaches us. The practice of consecrating elements ahead of time for the convenience of the pastor, not having to go to small or remote congregations, weekend camps, or other such occasions is inappropriate and contrary to our historic doctrine and understanding of how God's grace is made available in the sacrament, according to Article 18 of the Articles of Religion, one of our doctrinal standards. So do not pre-consecrate. The better practice is to go yourself, if you're an authorized presider to these places, and if you are not able to go, work with your DS or other, other authorized presiders around you to develop a schedule so that everyone who, all the congregations who, who need to celebrate the sacrament have a regular authorized presider with them on some kind of basis. So don't pre-consecrate, go, or work on developing a schedule and be part of that yourself if you are an authorized presider. Third, self-serve or drop-in communion. Here's what this holy mystery has to say about these practices. Both self-serve communion, where people help themselves, and drop-in communion, where the elements are available over a period of time, are contrary to the communal nature of the sacrament, which is the celebration of the gathered community of faith. So instead of practicing drop-in communion, where particularly as is common in many churches on Christmas Eve, people can come in as family units or whenever when it's convenient for them, the elements are available and they can simply receive them. Perhaps the pastor is there to offer them a prayer of blessing at the time, but none of that is appropriate according to our teaching. It's contrary to our doctrine. Instead of drop-in communion, offer multiple services, offering full services of word and table. They can be brief, 30 minutes or so. That's enough time to do what you need to do. Um, but do not, do not any longer continue the practice of drop-in communion or self-serve communion. Finally, online communion. Do not do communion online, which is to say, webcasting your, web, your, your worship service so that people who are not there can receive, will, will take the elements for themselves in their remote location, and we call that good. The United Methodist Church does not call this good. 
The Council of Bishops has twice specifically issued a moratorium on this. In 2013, and they renewed it in 2014, that moratorium remains in effect. If the concern is that persons who are unwillingly absent from worship, perhaps they're in a healthcare facility or in prison or simply cannot be present with you when the majority of you worship, if your concern is for them, there's a much better practice called extending the table. And that is where the elements from the service where you have gathered are taken by a person who was there, the pastor or other persons present, to those persons. You use Word and Table 5 as the guide for how you do this, and you extend the table that, is, that was the gathered community to others who would have been in that gathered community if they could have been. Great book on this topic by Mark Stom, professor of worship, called Extending the Table. Look up Extending the Table and Mark Stom, S-T-A-M-M, get the book. It will give you every bit of guidance you need, theological and practical, for how to set up a very effective ministry of extending the table for those who are unwillingly absent. So four things not to do, and four much better things we should all be doing. Hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at umcdiscipleship.org, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or just drop a line here on this page, and perhaps your question or comment might become the basis of a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.